Red Dead Redemption 2 is one of my favorite games of all time. A couple months ago I did a challenge where I basically tried beating the game with only a shotgun. It was pretty hard at some points, but overall it wasn't too bad. Well, I decided to take on a much harder challenge, which is trying to beat Red Dead Redemption 2 with only throwables. Before I do that though, I'd like to go over a couple of rules. Rule number one. I'm not allowed to kill or damage any enemies unless I use throwables or my fists. Rule number two. If I use anything other than throwables or my fists in a cutscene, it doesn't count since cutscenes are uncontrollable. Will I be able to beat Red Dead Redemption 2 with only throwables? Let's find out. The game starts us off in the middle of nowhere with us trying to find some supplies for our gang. On the way, we came across one of our gang members, Micah Bell. He seems like a pretty nice guy. We eventually found a house that seemed to be occupied. Me and Micah hid behind some stuff while Dutch went up to the front door. It's always good to be two steps ahead, especially when the people in the house are some O'Driscolls. The O'Driscolls are basically our rival gang, so we had to kill them. I didn't have any throwables in this mission, so I had to use my fists. It actually wasn't that hard considering they all had guns. After demolishing all of the O'Driscolls, we found a girl in the house named Sadie, so we took her with us. The next day, Abigail told me that her husband, John Marston, was missing, so me and Javier decided to go and look for him. We were eventually able to find him, and yeah, he didn't look too great. As we were walking back to our horses, a pack of wolves started coming towards us. We obviously didn't want them getting near John, so I made them follow me. The only issue with this though is that I still had no throwables, so I tried kicking them, and to be honest, it was actually working. I said it was actually working. Okay, fine, it wasn't working. One thing's for sure, these wolves are very persistent. I'm a lot more persistent though, so I kicked and kicked and kicked until I was the last one standing. That'll show those pesky wolves not to mess with me again- <sighs> Never mind. Anyways, remember those O'Driscolls I decimated? Yeah, well it turns out their leader, Como O'Driscoll, was hiding out not too far from us, so we decided to pay him a little visit. Once we got there, I scoped out the camp and saw Como O'Driscoll, but he left before we could say hi. I was pretty sad because I really wanted to pulverize, I, I, I mean, say hi to Comb. Thankfully, a big chunk of his gang was down there, so at least our journey wasn't completely unnecessary. Fighting an entire gang would normally be pretty easy, but guess what? I still had no throwables, which means that I had to fight the entire gang with my fist. It definitely wasn't going to be easy, especially when I get really close to the end and then Micah all of a sudden just feels like dying. It also doesn't help that every single one of the enemies have repeaters. A lot of punching, healing, lassoing, and tackling later, I was finally able to get past. The enemy gang was very impressed by my skills, so they willingly gave me some gifts. On the way back to our camp, we came across an O'Driscoll. Now, we could always just kill him, or we could kidnap him and do unspeakable things to him. Personally, I prefer the latter option. The next day, me, Dutch, and Hosea found out about some train passing through here, so we decided to rob it. Once we got there, we told Bill to set up some dynamite under the train tracks so we could easily get on the train. We probably should have told someone else to do that though, because Bill's brain is the size of a pebble. I mean, I have always dreamed of jumping onto a train, so I guess Bill was actually doing me a favor. You know who wasn't doing me a favor? Lenny. I swear, the amount of times this guy died is almost impressive. When I say impressive, I mean impressively annoying. I don't even know if impressively is a real word, but whatever, we'll go with it. Once I stopped the train, a ton of enemies just randomly came out of nowhere and started shooting at us. I could have sworn I killed all of them. Maybe that's why Lenny kept on dying. After I annihilated all of the enemies, we blew open one of the train carts and found some very valuable bonds. We then proceeded to get back to camp before any more guards came along. Once we got back to camp, we decided to set up our camp someplace warmer, so we packed up our stuff and headed to Horseshoe Overlook. When we got there, I went up to Uncle and asked him if he wanted to go into town with me. He said he'd go if we also brought Karen, Maribeth, and Tilly. I reluctantly agreed. You may be wondering, wait, CJ, why don't you really want to take them with you? Well, let me show you. Finally, some peace and quiet. When we arrived in Valentine, I went shopping, helped Karen fend off some creepy man, saved a guy from falling off a cliff, knocked out the guy I just saved because he was super annoying. You know, just an average morning in the life of a cowboy. Punching that guy in the face felt pretty good. I still wasn't fulfilled though, so I started a bar fight with Javier, Charles, and Bill. I was doing pretty good until some big guy came down and threw me out of a window. I thought I was going to be turned into a garlic knot right then and there, but then I remembered the story of David and Goliath and how David, despite being a lot smaller than Goliath, was still able to beat him. The only difference was that David killed Goliath. I, on the other hand, gave the quote-unquote Goliath a dent in his head. 
After that, me, Dutch, and Bill were feeling a little devious, so we started tormenting the O'Driscoll that we kidnapped. That was until he gave us details on where one of Combs' camps were. First, I punched a helpless man, then I gave some guy permanent brain damage, and now I get to kill some O'Driscolls? It must be my lucky day. To make my lucky day even better, Bill gave me some throwing knives, which will definitely be pretty useful in this challenge. Once we got there, I wanted to silently take out as many guys as I could for obvious reasons. After that, we let loose on these disgusting O'Driscolls. On a serious note though, how embarrassing would it be to have an entire gang of people with all sorts of different guns and you get killed by a dude with some throwing knives? Anyways, once all the O'Driscolls were dead, I went inside their little house and found some money. Pretty cool if you ask me. I wanted to take a little break from all of the action, so I decided to go hunting with Hosea. He didn't tell me exactly what we were hunting. He really only told me the size of the animal, which according to him was massive, which wasn't very helpful since there are quite a few massive animals in Red Dead Redemption 2. For example, it could be a bison, a bear, a moose, or even an alligator. I don't know about you, but I definitely wouldn't want the animal to be a bear. What do you know, it's a bear. After getting torn apart, the only way to escape from the bear was to use a normal knife, which means that I have to add a point to the other weapons used counter. After that not-so-great encounter, I met up with Charles, Javier, and Trelawney because one of our gang members, Sean McGuire, was captured by the police. We found out that he was being moved on some boats, so we followed it until it came to a stop. We then proceeded to go down to where the boat was, take out some of the guards, and then start a mini-world war with the others. I eventually came across a guy that I couldn't attack due to him being too far. I tried getting higher ground to see if it would help, but all it did was give the guy an opening to kill Javier. Once I respond, I tried again, and for some reason my throwing knife was able to hit him. On one hand, I'm glad it finally let me kill him. On the other hand, I'm just really confused. After that, we... you know what? Wait a second. Let's see, after that we croaked? No, that just sounds weird. After that we suicided? Well, we definitely didn't do that. After that we slaughtered. Huh, perfect. <clears throat> After that we slaughtered the rest of the guys and then proceeded to save Sean. The more the merrier. The next day I met up with Hosea because he wanted to rob his cousin's ex-wife's third cousin's uncle and nephew. It's complicated. Once we got there, I told Jose to distract them while I robbed their house. I found some jewelry, some money. Oh, I also found a stagecoach, so I decided to steal it right in front of Hosea's cousin's ex-wife's third cousin's uncle and nephew. Whew, try saying that ten times fast. Once we sold the stagecoach, I unlocked a new store in the game called A Fence, which thankfully sells a good selection of throwables. It also has these weird masks. They have the Psycho Mask, the Executioner Hood, the Metal Skull Mask, and finally, the canvas sack hood. I gotta say, I'm really digging the executioner hood. It really just makes me want to execute someone. Don't you guys agree? As much as I'd love to be an executioner, I love stealing sheep even more, so me and John made our way to the location. When we got there, I immediately spotted some sheep. Before we could steal them, though, I had to scare away the owners using a sniper rifle. Remember, as long as I'm not shooting or killing anyone with anything other than throwables or my fist, it's fine. After scaring away the owners, we rounded up the sheep and brought them to an auction to make some quick and easy cash. Just as I was about to leave, John told me that Dutch was waiting for me in the saloon, so I made my way over there. As I was talking to Dutch, somebody called out his name. It was none other than Leviticus Cornwall. I guess he was the owner of the train we robbed back in the Snowy Mountains? How was I supposed to know? We noticed that he had John and Strauss hostage, so we had to think fast. When I say think fast, I obviously mean locking Arthur into Deadeye. There was literally nothing I could do to avoid this, so I had to shoot the guy. After that, I decided to switch it up a bit by using throwing axes instead of the usual throwing knives. Innovation 101 Chapter 3 starts with me, Dutch, and Hosea going on a fishing trip. On the way, we came across Trelawney, who got arrested and was being moved to a jail. As we were trying to get him out, one of the prisoners unlocked the gate and all of them escaped. We decided to help the sheriff and deputy get the prisoners back. Why are we helping? Well, one, because maybe they'll let Trelawney go if we get the prisoners back, and two, I'm just a straight-out adrenaline junkie. I'll do anything to feel adrenaline rushing through my veins. Once I got close enough, I jumped onto the train and made my way towards the prisoners. I threw the first prisoner off the train because I love the ragdoll physics in this game. 10 out of 10 fall. The other guy wanted to be a little riskier, so he pulled out a knife. Not that it really mattered since I destroyed him anyway. After that, I dropped the prisoner off at the sheriff's office. In return, they let Trelawney go. Mission successful. Later that day, some creepy woman started telling me how much she loved Dutch. I've been to every nook and cranny of Red Dead Redemption 2's map and still couldn't find who asked. 
So instead of listening to her, I decided to help Uncle Charles and Bill rob a stagecoach. It turns out that the stagecoach we were robbing was actually Leviticus Cornwalls. Okay, I'm sorry, but how much stuff does this guy even own? I really didn't want to deal with his men today, so we decided to find a place to hide. Once we found a place to hide, we waited until night to escape. So, it turns out waiting did absolutely nothing. There's two major issues when only using throwables. The first issue is the range. The second issue is that you have to pick up the throwables after you use them. That normally wouldn't be an issue if there wasn't 25 guys constantly shooting at you. Just like every other time though, I was eventually able to power through it and escape. The next day I went to the sheriff's office and I guess we're deputies now? I have no idea why Dutch would agree to that, but whatever, at least I get a shiny badge. Our first mission on the job was to locate some stolen moonshine. Once we found the camp, we needed to take out the enemies before we could acquire the moonshine. After taking out the enemies, we had to blow up the base, so I threw some dynamite and watched it blow- Never mind. I genuinely didn't know that throwing dynamite makes it turn into a harmless little firecracker. The more you know. All of a sudden, a ton of enemies came out of nowhere and started shooting at us. Okay, seriously, where did you guys come from? The element of surprise is not gonna help you. I needed to make sure that these guys learned a lesson, so I started planting my axe into one of the enemy's heads. Okay, I think that's good. Okay, seriously, that's enough. I said that's enough. Once we got back to the wagon, me, Dutch, and Bill decided that it'd be best if we took most of the moonshine. The reason for that is because the moonshine is actually owned by the Braithwaites, a family full of rich, corrupted inbreds, so me and Hosea made our way to their mansion. Once we got there, we told Catherine Braithwaite that she could have her moonshine back for $2 a jug. She accepted, but instead of taking it back, she told us to sell it at the saloon in Rhodes. When we got to the saloon, Hosea told everybody that every drink in the saloon was free for a limited time. The only problem with this plan was that I had to be the one pouring the drinks. Come on, man. Thankfully, some enemies came into the saloon and started shooting at us. That normally wouldn't be a good thing, but my hands were really tired, so I was actually pretty thankful. Once we killed all the enemies, we had to escape, so we got on our wagon. It turns out that you can't use throwables while you're riding on a wagon? That is not what I wanted to hear. I tried shooting nothing for about two minutes, and it actually worked. I have no idea why it worked, but I'm happy nonetheless. The next day, I met up with Karen, Bill, and Lenny because they wanted to rob a bank. Who could turn down a good old-fashioned bank robbery? I know I couldn't. You know what else I couldn't turn down? Some awesome clothes. Hey, if we're gonna rob a bank, we might as well look cool doing it. Once we arrived at the bank, I told the bank teller to open the vault. Don't worry, I made sure to ask him nicely. Once he opened the vault, I started opening the safes. I took the slow but quiet route because I really didn't want the police breathing down our necks. That didn't age well. As you all know, I'm not allowed to use guns in this playthrough. You know what I am allowed to use though? A lasso. Here's a tip for all the people out there trying to beat Red Dead Redemption 2 without guns. For some reason, if you lasso someone off their horse while you're also on your horse, they'll instantly die. At least that's what happened for me. Correct me if I'm wrong. The next day I met up with Sean, Micah, and Bill because the sheriff wanted to talk to us about something. I think I already know why he wants to talk to us. He must be wanting to know how my hair grew this long in the span of a day. To be honest, I have absolutely no idea, but I kinda like it. Yeah, it turns out it wasn't about my rapid hair growth. It was actually about their rapid growth of suspecting all of us not being who we said we were. I mean, don't get me wrong, they're 100% right about us not being who we said we were, but did you really have to shoot Sean to prove your point? After we killed all the deputies, me and Micah went up to the sheriff's office, and to no one's surprise, Bill was obviously being held hostage. Yet again, there was literally nothing I could do to avoid this kill, so I had to shoot the guy. As if this day wasn't already bad enough, once I got back to camp, we found out that Jack Marston was kidnapped. It turns out that he was kidnapped by the Braithwaites. You know, the rich, corrupted, inbred family. We obviously needed to get him back, so we made our way to the Braithwaite mansion. When we got there, we told them to give us Jack back. They said they didn't know what we were talking about. I really hate compulsive liars, so I started annihilating them with my throwing knives. I also wanted to have a little fun, so I decided to use a couple of my Molotovs. <sighs> There's nothing like the smell of burning flesh. After that, we went inside the mansion and started looking for Jack. All we found were some more Braithwaites. My gosh, how many children did this lady have? In typical Red Dead fashion, there were also some backup enemies. The only issue was that I couldn't quite reach the enemies with my throwing knives. Good thing I had some dynamite. Dynamite's a lot more fun than throwing knives anyway. After we killed all the enemies, we went inside and what do you know, I get put into yet another unskippable Deadeye sequence. I tried shooting one of the guy's guns and it actually worked. I was surprised because the other times that I tried doing that, it didn't work at all. We then found Catherine Braithwaite and told her to tell us where Jack was. 
She said he was in San Denis with a man named Angelo Bronte. To thank her for telling us the truth, we gave her entire house the Up in Flames redesign. She loved it. Chapter 4 starts with us arriving in the not-so-beautiful city of San Denis since we were told that Angelo Bronte was here. After snooping around for a bit, we were finally able to find Angelo Bronte's house. Once we went inside, we asked him if he had Jack. He told us that he did and how he'd even give him back to us if we did him a small favor. The small favor he had in mind was for us to head down to the local cemetery and stop some grave robbers. As much as we didn't want to do that, we kind of needed to get Jack back, so me and John made our way to the cemetery. Once we reached the cemetery, we started looking for the grave robbers. As we were looking for them, we came across a dog, some drunk guy, graves, obviously. We also heard a noise that was coming from a big door, so we decided to open it, and what do you know, there was absolutely nothing. There were some grave robbers that started shooting us from behind, though. Even though they had a massive advantage, they still weren't able to beat us. Once we got back to Angelo Bronte's house, he kept his promise and gave us back Jack. We also got invited to his fancy party. Pretty cool if you ask me. The next day, you guessed it, we headed over to Angelo Bronte's party. When we arrived, we went to Angelo Bronte and asked him if he knew any quick and easy jobs we could do if you get what I'm saying. He told us about some trolley station that supposedly had a lot of cash stored away. As cool as that information was, these fireworks were even cooler, so I decided to watch them instead. The following day, I was kind of sad that Angelo Bronte's party was over, so me and Trelawney went to another one. Before we went, I got a snazzy new suit and a pretty sweet haircut. Once we got to the party, I noticed some people were playing poker, so I decided to join them. After blatantly cheating a couple of times, one of the people I beat got mad and put his watch on the line. To no one's surprise, I obviously won. His watch was located upstairs, so one of the employees in a very familiar guard took me upstairs so I could get it. When we got upstairs, I pushed the employee to the ground and started looking in the safe when all of a sudden he pulled a gun on me which put me into yet another unavoidable Deadeye sequence. Come on Rockstar, give me a break. Sadly, the only people Rockstar gives breaks to are the people working on Red Dead Online, which explains why the game hasn't gotten an actual good update in almost two years. Nonetheless, there was nothing I could do to avoid this, so I had to shoot the employee. After that, we headed back downstairs, and to no one's surprise, the guards found out about us killing the employee. I also had no throwables, which is just great. I did have a repeater though, so I just shot nothing until we were finally able to escape. Mission successful. Remember that trolley station that Angelo Bronte told us about? Yeah, well me, Dutch, and Lenny finally decided to rob it. Or at least we did until we found out that the trolley station had absolutely no money in it. Tons of police officers also showed up out of nowhere, so we put the pieces together and figured out that Angelo Bronte must have set us up. As much as we would have liked to keep on talking about how terrible Angelo Bronte was, we kinda had an issue with the police, so we got on a trolley and tried to escape. The next part had me shooting cops, or in my case had me shooting nothing for about two minutes. Once the trolley crashed, we had to fend off all the cops. Remember how Lenny kept on dying in Chapter 1? Yeah, well he must have thought it was funny since he started doing it again. We were getting overwhelmed by cops, so we found a wagon and started to pedal to the metal. That doesn't really make a lot of sense because wagons don't actually have a pedal, but whatever, we'll go with it. Nonetheless, we were eventually able to escape with a grand total of... Fifteen dollars. Oh, <laughs> and a quarter. Don't forget the quarter. Later that day, we decided to have a little chat with Angelo Bronte because he set us up back at that trolley station. In other words, Dutch drowned him and fed him to an alligator. One thing's for sure, that's a very creative way to die. A couple days later, I met up with Dutch and Hosea because they wanted to rob the bank in San Denis. Like I said before, who could turn down a good old-fashioned bank robbery? As we were robbing the bank, somebody called out our name. It was none other than the Agency. They're basically the FBI of the late 1800s. They had Hosea hostage, so we told them to let him go. They must have misunderstood us though, because the only thing they let him go to was heaven. We obviously weren't going to let Hosea's death slide, so we started attacking the agency. A little while later, Dutch told me to blow a hole in the wall. It said that I had to shoot the dynamite, which I obviously couldn't do, so instead I threw a Molotov at it and it actually worked. We then proceeded to make our way to the roof and run for our lives, but as we were doing that, Lenny got shot. And yes, this death was actually real, unlike the other 97 times he's died. We eventually found some shelter that the agency couldn't find us in. A couple hours later, we decided that it was about time to escape. We were thankfully able to find a boat that was about to leave San Denis, so we snuck onto it. Everything was finally starting to go our way. There's just nothing that could possibly go wrong. Everything went wrong. I had no choice but to jump off the ship and pray that I don't die. Chapter 5 starts with us waking up on some random island. After walking around for a bit, I found the others. It turns out that we were on the island of Guarma. I guess the people of Guarma don't like visitors since we were immediately put in shackles. Out of nowhere, some random people started shooting at the officers, so we took this as an opportunity to escape. 
Once we escaped, we started following the people who saved us when all of a sudden Javier got shot in the leg. We didn't have time to save him, so we told him we'd come back for him. Before we could do that though, we had to destroy some of the officers. Actually, I take that back. They had to destroy some of the officers. I didn't have any throwables, so I yet again had to shoot absolutely nothing. Once all the officers were dead, Hercule, the guy who saved us, gave us some place to stay. He also told us to meet him at the big fort when we we're ready to get off the island. As much as we'd love to get off the island, we still needed to save Javier, which is why the next day I met up with Dutch to try and save him. We needed to cause a distraction, so we decided to set their sugar refinery on fire. Once all the officers were distracted, we got Javier out of the cage. A lot of pointless shooting later, Javier passed out, so Dutch told me to deal with the officers while he gets Javier to safety. I still had no throwables, and shooting nothing obviously wasn't going to work, so I had to beat them up. This would be a whole lot easier if there wasn't 20 guards constantly shooting at me, but thanks to my collection of health cures, I was eventually able to do it. Now that we had Javier, all we had to do was get off the island, so we met up with Hercule at the big fort. As we were planning our escape, we noticed that the government of Guarma sent a ton of soldiers in a warship to kill us. I'm not gonna lie, I'm actually kinda flattered. We've caused so much trouble in the span of two days that they sent a whole warship to deal with us. It obviously won't work though because of three simple words. Video. Game. Protagonist. After that, Hercule took us to a boat. The only issue was that the captain was nowhere to be found. We found out that he was being held hostage, so we made our way to his location. On the way, we came across some guards, so me and Micah took them out. Okay, that was pretty unnecessary, but whatever. Getting throwables, on the other hand, was necessary, which is why I was happy that I finally got some. When we got to the captain, we told him to follow us as we blasted, or in my case, throwing knifed our way to victory. That was until I came across a point where I had to shoot a guy in a tower with a cannon. There was no way around it, trust me, I tried. So I had to shoot the guy. After that, we thanked Hercule for his help and then sailed back home. Once we arrived back home, the agency found out where we were, so they welcomed us back with a Gatling gun. Pretty weird to welcome someone back with a Gatling gun, but you know what they say. It's the thought that counts. I made sure to put a lot of thought into throwing my knife into this guy's head. He liked it so much that he fainted from pure joy. After we killed all the guys, Dutch told me and Charles to find a new camp. We found a place that looked, uh, splendid. Before we could move in, we had to kill all the cannibalistic hobos that were living in there. I definitely wouldn't want to wake up to one of these guys staring at me. As I was strolling through Saint Denis, Arthur got a mean cough, so I made my way to the doctor and it turns out that Arthur got tuberculosis, which definitely wasn't a good thing to have in the 1800s. I was pretty distraught after hearing that terrible news, so I decided to go on a hot air balloon. I've always wanted to ride one of these. A little while later, we got pretty close to some random island, and I thought I spotted something familiar, so I took out my binoculars. It turns out that John was being held captive. I have no idea why he was here, but we had to save him nonetheless. As we were going back, I saw that Sadie was being chased by some O'Driscolls. I obviously had to help her. The only issue is that none of my throwables were able to reach the O'Driscolls. Trust me, I tried. Shooting nothing also didn't work. That was pretty much my last resort, which means that I had to actually shoot the O'Driscolls. Overall, I had to shoot 11 of them, which bumps my other weapon's used counter to a whopping 16 kills. First, Arthur gets tuberculosis, and now this? What else could possibly go wrong? I shouldn't have said that. At least I'm able to use my throwables now. After that not-so-great mission, me and Sadie made our way to the island so we could save John. Once we got there, we snuck up to a tower so we could get a better view of the area. It turns out that John wasn't working today, so we took one of the guards hostage and made our way to the prison. When we got there, I told them to give us John or else we'd make the guard we took hostage play the entirety of Grand Theft Auto the Trilogy the Definitive Edition. They were obviously shocked that we'd even consider making the guard do something like that, so they gave us John. See, I told you. If you're the video game protagonist, you can basically get away with anything. Well, except tuberculosis, but we'll ignore that for now. Later that day, me and Sadie met up with Dutch because he wanted to tell us something. According to Dutch, Como Driscoll was being hung today. Coma's quote-unquote been hung dozens of times, but every time he's a second away from death, his annoying henchmen get him out, so our goal today is to make sure that his henchmen don't do that. The plan was simple, we'd all dress up differently so they wouldn't be able to tell who we were. We noticed that there was a sniper at the top of that building, so I made my way towards him. When I got up there, he immediately jumped me. This wouldn't be an issue if it let me switch to my throwables or my fists, but it didn't. I tried about everything to avoid this, but nothing worked, so I had to kill him. After that, I had to make sure that Como Driscoll hung without any issues. Once the inevitable happened, Sadie lost her temper for god knows what reason, which caused us to get into a massive gunfight. Thanks a lot, Sadie. I had to use a sniper rifle in this part, so I just shot nothing, but then I noticed that one of the guys was literally invincible. 
Seriously, Sadie and Dutch probably shot him around a hundred times and he still wouldn't die. Even this police officer was shooting hit. Never mind. There was nothing I could do so I had to shoot the guy. The next day, Dutch told me about some train coming through Saint Denis and how we should rob it. I was kinda bored so I agreed to help him. Once I got close to the train, I jumped onto it and made my way towards the vault. The journey was not gonna be easy though. Throwing knife after throwing knife, I had to kill every single one of the guards. After that massacre, I came across a point where I had to use a Gatling gun. Thankfully, I didn't have to actually shoot anybody. Once we got inside the vault, we started stealing the money. When we thought we had enough, we jumped off the train and headed back to camp. The next mission had me and Sadie saving Abigail from the agency. The agency is really starting to get on my nerves. Just like many other missions in this chapter, it makes me use a sniper rifle. It's also impossible to progress unless you kill one of the guys. I officially hate Chapter 6. Once I got into the building, I started freeing Abigail when all of a sudden Agent Milton pointed a gun at me. He told me that Micah was giving them information the whole time. Who could have seen that coming? As he was distracted, Abigail was able to get out of the chair and shoot him. We then proceeded to escape before more of the agency showed up. Once we escaped, I told Abigail and Sadie to get far away from here because things were about to go down at camp. One very sad cowboy ride later, I arrived at camp and confronted Micah about being a rat. He got really defensive, so he pointed a gun at me. Before anything exciting could happen, the agency showed up at our camp, so me and John made a run for it. Once we reached the top of the mountain, I told John he should go before it's too late. He didn't want to leave me at first, but I eventually convinced him. As I was covering for John, Micah tackled me down a mountain. We then started fighting for our dear lives. I was actually doing pretty good for a deathly ill middle-aged man. After fighting for a while, I tried grabbing a gun and I would have succeeded if it wasn't for Dutch. I said this in my shotgun only video and I'm gonna say it again. Why on God's green earth did Dutch betray me for this guy? After that, I died looking into the sunset which officially marks the end of this playthrough. So back to the main question of the video. Can you beat Red Dead Redemption 2 with only throwables? You definitely can't. You could probably find a way to not kill as many people as I did, but overall, beating the game with only throwables is literally impossible. But anyways guys, if you enjoyed the video, consider leaving a like. And if you haven't already and you like my content, make sure to subscribe. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.